is a few days of trouble. A wise man once said, but I'll not complain, for I'm sheltered, I'm clothed, and I'm fed. But many's a trial, my wants and my dreams put me through. Everybody. And I apologize there for a few frogs that were floating around in my throat, and I'm very sorry. Um, this is our 
this week's edition of uh, L- Lindsay, Lindsay, Lindsay. Yes. If there's going to be frogs, <laughs> there has to be tadpoles. Now, where are the, are there any tadpoles in here now? Because if you can't have frogs unless there is tadpoles in the Aww. first place, can you? Aren't they cute? They are. <laughs> they are. Anyhow, I'll let you go and remove your frogs. Then you come back and sing later. Father, we come in the name of Jesus around your word this afternoon. To do as your word tells us to do. To expose the wiles of the enemy. But when this is not an enemy we're going to defeat. This is an enemy who is already defeated by your precious blood at Calvary. Where burdens were lifted. And so as we come into this other Jesus course, we thank thee for thy presence. We thank thee for thy calling and anointing. That as we repair the breach by exposing this evil, wicked and decadent course... We praise you that thou art with us as we bring people out of this filth into the glorious gospel. Amen. The Alpha Course is filth. There's no other real way to describe it. Why is it filth? Because it calls our Jesus a son of the gods. It denies God manifest in the flesh. It denies the resurrection as it relates to believers. Oh, I can hear you all show. Oh, no, it doesn't, you pantomime demons. It does, because Nicky Gumbel's Bible is the NIV, which says all these things. And Nicky Gumbel himself called Wesker and Hort, the greatest heretics probably of all time, the greatest textual critics. And so we're not to be yoked with this evil course. And if you find yourself in a church which is using the Alpha Course, leave it. For what you're dealing with is an attempt to bring together a form of Christianity with paganism and also with philosophy and also with a compromise which is so great is one of the reasons why there is deadness in so many churches we concluded last week with an introduction of understanding to the alpha course we looked at how breaches of the bloodstained word are ostracized by people who have apparently been saved through alpha no longer do we hear of people being saved through the conviction of the holy ghost we discovered last week that the Lutheran theology of faith alone is missing so that thousands of Roman Catholics can embrace the course and have more than one way to God. Yet the Bible warns us, and with this we concluded last week, to be uh, not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Page 45, for those of you with the notes. What fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? With those of you with the notes, we're now on page 46 with an introduction, or rather continuing the introduction to our understanding of the Alpha Course, for which we will go into even more detail next week. Now, despite of majoring on the Holy Spirit, the conviction of the Spirit is never mentioned in Alpha. Repentance is just mentioned, but not as a major issue as in Jesus' ministry. And the ministry of the past, for example, from my mission hall days. I wonder if there are many born-again Christians left as a major part of evangelical Pentecostal movements have been stolen away. Ask yourselves, In Great Britain, where are the changed lives? Where are the testimonies of withdrawal from the world? Last night, we were watching the Easter presentation of the Gaithers. And all of this was in there. And it was done so beautifully. Yet we find it missing from most of what is called British church. You know... 
this Alpha course may allow you to say a prayer, receive the Spirit, and continue your life in the world. Because the students in this course will not have come under the Holy Ghost conviction power. On top of all this, the student is recommended to use a Gnostic Bible. So what does the Word of God say about all of this? We look in John's Gospel, 1618 from the KJV. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. In Psalm 51, 4, against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. So we read that he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. But this new, different Jesus in the church today is a God of all love, but no justice. Jesus said, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before me. And Luke 13, 2, and Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. You see, our Jesus became sin for us. The one who knew no sin became sin for us, that we may be the righteousness of Christ. He took on him the sins of this world. And you see, we need to recognize we are sinners and come to the cross and pick up our cross to follow him. Jesus answering said unto them in Luke 13, 2, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or those 18 upon whom the tower in Siloam fell, slew them. Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. A point sadly missing from Alpha. The British publication, the Christian Research Network Journal, has scrutinized the Alpha program and come up with six major criticisms. The journal says the Alpha course is massively overhyped and spiritually deceptive with its whole inadequate view of Christian conversion and experience. And Pastor Chris Hand of the Christ Baptist Church, who is still there after many years, in his analysis of Alpha, concludes the following. One, the God of Alpha is not the God of the Bible. It does not present us with the God who has revealed himself in the Bible. It simply fails to tell us anything we need to know about God. Two, the plight of man in Alpha is not as serious as in the Bible. Alpha does not use strong terms and leaves us rather unclear about where we stand. As one follows its arguments, sin is more to be seen in the way we have messed up our lives. For all the gravity of sin, Alpha never allows us to feel too bad about ourselves, never permits us to see ourselves in God's sight. That is a big omission. Three, the Jesus Christ of Alpha is not the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Despite having part of the course titled, why did Jesus die? It's unable in the final analysis to answer this question. Four, the love of God in Alpha is not the love of God of the Bible. The God of the Bible is love, but it is love that is seen in his willingness to save sinners. Without the context of God's holiness and absolute perfection, the meaning of love is lost to us. Five, the Holy Spirit of Alpha is not the Holy Spirit of the Bible. Alpha Spirit appears to work in ways that lie outside the confines of Scripture. Whoever it is that people are introduced to, 
at the Alpha weekend, it is not the Holy Spirit. But whoever this mysterious guest is, is equally at home with the ecstatic gatherings of the New Age enthusiasts and non-Christian religions alike. Six, conversions in Alpha are not like the conversions in the Bible. More often than not, it is an emotional experience about the love of God, but without any understanding of holiness or the need to be saved from our sins. For all its our efforts, Alpha does not help us to know God. It does not describe the true and living God for us. It does not diagnose man's condition accurately enough. It is unable to supply us with the good news. Alpha is just new window dressing on the old Holy Ghost bartender theme, the Toronto theme and the Brownsville reruns. It could be retitled Steps to Frenzy or Finding God in My Feelings or Letting Out the Animal Inside. The result is not unlike the old Ezlin groups, primal screen therapy or the lunacy of a drug experience. Nicky Gumbel regards Alpha as a new approach for a post-Christian age. But God's approach has not changed, however. For his spirit still convicts of sin, the only way to be born again. And our question for those doing the course as students, Pastor Chris Hounds points, on why the Alpha course should never be used in the Christian church. So from the negative, we go to the positive. On why we should never use Alpha. To the positive of what we should do. Criteria of knowing whether God is in charge of a meeting are as follows. Number one, people will pray to the Father in the name of Jesus and talk to Jesus in a one-to-one -one relationship who intercedes to the Father as the Spirit intercedes. And his intercession will be in line with the Spirit and the Son interceding to the Father, Romans 8. 2, and this is 2 of 14 points. All prophecy will be given in line with 1 Corinthians 14 to edify for exhortation and comfort. 3, the Holy Ghost coming upon a person will be in line with Acts 1.8. Yeah. The empowerment for ministry. How often, Lindsay, have we seen the Holy Spirit being used for self-gratification? Yeah. Lindsay's saying all the time. In meetings there will be conviction of sin. The word sanctification commonly used. Testimonies of the world being removed from People's lives will be common. An absolute passion to study the word daily. And continue on the road to holiness. Five, purity increases. And immorality decreases. Six, laying on of hands will be in line of bringing healing and deliverance to others. Seven, there will be no emphasis of self-gratification but a yearning desire to pass the Holy Spirit on. In effect, to lose the Spirit as Jesus lost virtue with the woman with the issue of blood. Eight, there will be an overwhelming yearning to be led daily by the Spirit of God, Romans 8. This yearning does not give any heed to one's own life. Nine, the changed individual will not have to come up continuously for prayer at meetings. Because the individual would have studied the word day by day and the truth will have set them free. So instead of ministry, the emphasis will be on testimony. Ten, they will know the power of the blood, will not give heed to Bible translations that have removed the blood. Eleven, they will recognize true ministers of God's word who plunge the powers of darkness with the true sword of the Spirit, rather than those who give homilies to make them feel good. 
12. A true minister will not be concerned over a decline in numbers. Rather, he will be concerned about a decline in morality. They will recognize the true move of the Spirit at this time, which is a separation between those of the true word and those of the false. And penultimately, number 13, secret societies that have infiltrated the church will be exposed for what they are. Those watching our Constitution Keeper program this morning will realize that. The power of the Spirit overwhelming a person will always relate to a determination to witness the power of God. And finally, number 14, the person will always talk about the Word of God, not the experience, for from the Word emanates the power to be witnesses. And so we ask this, what you see today being a true move of the Holy Ghost, you would have seen colleges full of people studying the blood-bought word. But anything but, Alpha has seen a reverse in missions activity. For this is an intercultural course rather than one of conviction. You would have seen prayer meetings, Bible studies full. Intellectual debate would have been brought to naught. Yet in churches today, intellectual debate is all over the place. Instead, you would have witnessed the dying to self before the Father. An overwhelming desire to fulfill the Father's will. Fulfillment of the Father's will will be a condition for healing and deliverance. There will be a huge respect for those who minister the word of God. In Britain, it's just the opposite. Preachers of the true blood-bought word of God will be wealthy. But it will not be for self-gratification, but for establishing the word of God, Deuteronomy 8.18, where it says that God has given us the power to get wealth for one reason, and one reason alone, to establish his covenant. Prosperity will be linked to obedience, Job 36.11, which reads, if you obey and serve him, you will spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasures. Prosperity and health will be linked to the ability to proclaim the gospel, 3 John 2, which declares that above all things we prosper and be in health. Because of this, the you, however, is the person who has died to the things of this world. For his prosperity is in the context of walking the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 1 and 2. There'll be an overwhelming longing to tithe and give offerings for the mission field. Partake at the table of the Lord, not with an attitude initially of receiving from the Lord, but with an attitude of giving to the Lord, as Abraham gave at the table of Melchizedek, referred to in Genesis 14 and Galatians 3. Money will not be important to the individual except in the view of providing for family which will be a family completely dedicated to proclaiming the word of God. This will be a priority over having luxuries, although the Lord will provide these once he has seen fruit to witness that these will not be idols in that person's life. For in all things he must have the preeminence. And my word is this, that you are to deliver what was my church from the God of Mammon, to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Joseph, to the God of Jacob, Isaiah and all the prophets. You are to preach my word wherever I tell you to go. And you are going to have more and more people crying out for the things of God in the manner of which I tell you. Whom you see in the churches today are not generally saved because they have sought the experience and not the sacrifice. You give me all of your lives and I will give you all of mine. And the true church looks to me first and not acceptance in the world. What you're witnessing today is a different gospel. What you see in NIV churches is a gospel. It's false manuscripts readily admitted as being so. 
What you see in the King James authorized version is the gospel. The one martyrs gave their lives for. And it's through the blood of my sacrifice. Men and women are saved, declares the Lord. Delivered, set free. As Lindsay goes round to the other door, viewers, if you heard knocking, it is plants being delivered for our garden at the Bible College of Wales. Not as a continuous process. That's not the plants. It's about the sacrifice. Men and women are saved, delivered, set free. Not as a continuous process, but an immediate process of regeneration in line with the submission level of the individual. And I quote John Wycliffe, that he that leaveth our preaching and hearing the word of God for fear of being excommunicated of men is already excommunicated of God and shall in the day of judgment be counted a traitor to Christ. And so we ask our students, those at the Bible College of Wales doing this course, and you can send for this course, it's absolutely free. Simply email me, David Griffiths at ECCTV4219 at gmail.com. And our question is to summarize the characteristics of the true church. Something so rare to witness today. But I am telling you this with all of my heart. I long to be with believers of the true church rather than those who keep seeking their own self-gratification rather than the Spirit of God and obeying the dear Lord Jesus. We read from Genesis 2, 16 to 18 in closing, The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, Not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. So the message of this is that man, as in the Garden of Eden, has bowed down to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And it is that knowledge we find in the paganism, in the Gnosticism, of trying to combine different faith and philosophical beliefs together to appease everybody. And it is this we'll be going through over the coming weeks, beginning next week, with an explanation of how Alpha is full of Alexandrian Gnostic theology, even to the point of denying the deity of Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you for this, your word today, and that thou sent thy only begotten Son, denied in Alpha, but so clear in your word, that whosoever believeth in him shall not only not perish, but ever have everlasting life, but indeed be begotten of thee, for those led up by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Lindsay, come and sing the wonderful hymn of Fanny J. Crosby, He Hideth My Soul. Lindsay, come aboard. Thank you, David. So there you have an end of another section of the other Jesus course. And God bless it to you. And I hope that you will have had lots of revelation from it. Because at these last days, Jesus did warn about false Christs here, there, and everywhere. The other Jesus, in other words. So this is where we should be. In the cleft of the rock. In the words of this lovely hymn by Fanny J. Crosby. About the protection that comes from the Lord. Our rock. <laughs> Is Jesus my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me? He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. He hides.
Again, sorry everybody for the croaking frogs. I am sure they will disappear before the next program. Thank you so much for watching the other Jesus course this week's installment to be continued. God bless you. Bye. Bye.